Hey you, it's Covert Go 2. I make a lot of commander decks. I spend an insane amount of time trying to build and brew all types of commander decks, but not all of them get played on Worst Possible Commander Show or other commander shows, and some of them almost never get played. So I'm scratching an itch to talk about them, and especially some that I get excited about, like Owen Grady and Blue from the Jurassic Park little mini exp What is it called when they just shove them in another set? I don't know, but uh, yeah, Lost World, Jurassic Park, Dinosaurs. Let's talk about the commanders. Blue Loyal Raptor, it's a 5-4, and for each kind of counter on blue, each other dinosaur you control enters battlefield with a counter of that kind on it. Ah, we want counters on blue, because then blue teaches the other dinosaurs how it works. But who teaches blue how things work? Well, that would be Owen Grady, Chris Pratt, Raptor Trainer, one red and a green, three, two, Human Soldier Scientist, partner with Blue, and tap to put your choice of a Menace, Trample, Reach, or Haste counter on target dinosaur. Activate only as a sorcery. So we tap the Owen to put the counter on the Blue, then we cast another dinosaur, and that dinosaur enters with that type of counter already. But there are other ways to get counters on Blue, and other ways to spread your counters around to all of the dinosaurs. The deck is dino-themed, and it's in Teamer, which means we get Blue Dinosaurs, which is something a little bit unique and original. The deck has 29 creatures, it has 16 sorceries, 6 instants. What the heck is this? 6 instants? Is this really a CGB deck? It's it's dinos, we gotta do Timmy stuff. We've got artifacts, only 8 of those, 5 enchantments, and 33 lands. We'll get into some of the nitty gritty on that using the power of Moxfield, which is tags. Let's enable tags and break this down into several sections. A lot of deck tech videos on the interweb read every single card. I'm not going to do that necessarily. I'm trying to go over general strategy and theme as simply reading every single card gets a little tedious and some are staples. You see them over and over again. Some are much more surprising. I'm gonna highlight some of my absolute favorite cards as well. One of them are the new dinos that draw cards. Curious Ultasaur is a 2-5 Vigilance Reach for 4, and when a Dino deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. I would absolutely not play the deck without this card. This deck is absolutely sweet. And once you pile on some Menace and some Trample, you start hitting a lot more. And Earthshaker Dreadmaw is the other one. This new one enters the battlefield and draws a card for each Dino you control. Card draw is important to me. We'll get to why. Uh, in fact, we'll get to see just how much uh, very, very soon. So yes, we are trying to keep the cards flowing. Counters. I have nine ways to assist with putting counters on blue, and some of them I think are very creative. Obviously, one thing that you want is a plus one, plus one counter. It, for each counter on blue, each other dinosaur you control enters the battlefield with a counter of that kind. So a plus one, plus one counter goes a long way to giving all your other dinosaurs at least one plus one, plus one counter. Hence, we've got cards like Fight Rigging and Rhythm of the Wild, which when we don't use the haste can have it enter with a plus one plus one counter. Savage Stomp is actually a removal that adds a counter. But there are other counters that Owen oh, Grady, there are some tricks that Chris Pratt can't teach. And that's where the deck gets really fun key. We have Agent's Toolkit, which is a sneaky one out of New Capenna. It enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter, a flying counter a death touch counter and a shield counter those are all unique counters to uh what owen can teach which is awesome whenever a creature enters a battlefield you may move a counter from the toolkit onto that creature so this can get a special counter onto blue but only when blue enters the battlefield so it's not like we can pile all four onto blue very easily still agent's toolkit sweet card how about a hexproof counter? Slippery Bogbinder dishes out a hexproof counter. Let's go ahead and add one of those to the deck. It also lets you move any number of counters from among creatures onto that creature. So if you spread out your counters with the toolkit, the Bogbinder can pile them all onto blue, which is funky. But you know what I really like the idea of? When you're running dinos, when you're running big monsters, it's double strike. So spectacular showdown, uh, whether we're overloading this or casting it for two mana, can put a double strike counter on target creature. And then uh, it, 
it is uh goaded but uh yeah the double strike counter can then be dished out to other dinosaurs in the future one card that i have here that might not make sense to you at first glance uh is intrepid paleontologist um the reason this is here is because of a negative interaction that you should actually watch out for uh when you ca use two mana to exile a card from a graveyard you can cast a dinosaur spell from among cards you exiled <laughs> do you get where this is going yet if you cast a spell that way the creature enters with a finality counter on it so if you're thinking i don't want to pay blue's commander tax and i'm going to use the paleontologist to cast blue from my graveyard and blue enters with a finality counter that means now when blue dies it exiles no big deal it goes to command zone whatever but any other dinosaur you cast is going to enter the battlefield with a finality counter on it which that could matter, especially if you wanted to get it back with the paleontologist later. So just keep that odd uh, interaction in mind. You could be teaching all of your fellow dinosaurs how to exile themselves when they die. <laughs> Blue could, blue could be causing the extinction. Uh, all right, let's go to the dinos themselves. We have so many new ones and returning ones. Uh, sweet special guest art from Galter Primal Hunger. The Stampede Tyrant. God knows what the, this can do. Some sneaky dinos like uh, Ghidra, King of the Cosmos, Eluna, Apex of Wishes. That's in Teamer. You don't get to see it in all these decks. Some new dinos like Ravenous Tyrannosaurus, which when it attacks deals damage equal to its power to another creature. So it's kind of removal when it finally gets to attack. And excess uh, damage is dealt to that creature's controller. So a little, uh, a little ramming through from your Tyrannosaurus here. We've got a whole bunch of ways to make dinos. And when you pile on the counters, they get all kinds of new skills. You get to have all kinds of fun. Check out Hunting Velociraptor. This is a prowl dino. So dinosaurs have prowl. When you hit your opponent with a dinosaur, you can pay three mana to cast a dinosaur from your hand. That can be quite a discount considering a lot of the powerful dinosaurs we have here. A displaced dinosaur is also hanging out. A few cards that are in my other deck that I would add to this deck for sure are Regisaur Alpha. Uh, that card absolutely goes in the dino deck every single time, I would say. If you've got more like must includes, uh, put them down below. It's not in here because I only own one and it's in my Pant Pantlaza deck. All right. Explosives. Uh, this is a category I use for cards that take your deck from like going at the same pace as everybody else to the stratosphere. Now I'm doing huge, crazy, bigger things than everybody else. Uh, Itali Primal Conqueror, Itali Primal Storm are good examples of explosives, getting four cards out of one most of the time. Genesis Ultimatum, getting five. Regal Behemoth, doubling your mana. That's what I call an explosive in Commander. Finishers, uh, Kessig Wolf Run, Last March of the Ents, which can put so many creatures onto the battlefield and draw so many cards the showdown as discussed uh minsk and boo is a fling attached to a planeswalker that might draw cards so i think that it's a great addition to a deck like this i run 34 land and i'm counting a lorian revealed here you can go up on lands in fact you should probably go up to 37 or 38 if you want to know what to take out take out the pricey cards uh people often complain when i include these cards in my deck but i like them because they let me play more dinosaurs if you want to cut jewel lotus mana crypt and ancient tomb from your deck because of the price tag and the fact that they could go in so many decks and you want to go at a more i don't know casual pace that's totally fine add lands and you might want to add two or three more lands so uh, get up to 37 lands if you're going to cut like Mana Crypt and Ancient Tomb. I treat them like two lands, and the reason I love these cards is they let me stick more dinosaurs in my dinosaur deck. All right, protection. Protection. I always try to have at least five. This deck is good at protecting its board. The new Legolas's Quick Reflexes is absolutely amazing. This is a one green for a split-second instant. Untap target creature. And then until end of turn, it gains Hexproof, Reach, and whenever this becomes tapped, it deals damage equal to its power to a target creature. Protection, removal in one card, that is how you get something widely played in Commander. This will probably be a hard card to come across for a while since it's in those special Collector Edition Lord of the Rings boosters. I expect it to have a price tag. Other new card, Ripples of Potential. Proliferate, choose any number of permanents that add a counter on them this way, they phase out. Hard to get a Teferi's Protection type of effect where you get to phase your stuff out from a board wipe in these colors, but Ripple of Potential is a new one that can do that if you have counters on a bunch of things, which is very much what our deck wants to be doing anyway, thanks to the Owen and Blue Synergy. So we're going to try out Ripples of Potential here. 
in the rampy category 15 pretty good counting welcome to jurassic park in this category this is another multi-category all-star it's sort of removal turning a bunch of opponent stuff into walls while it's on the battlefield delaying them it makes a dinosaur so it goes in the dino category and the chapter three turns into a land so i treat it as a ramp uh, spell as well albeit a slow one removal Removal, important in any deck, and you see that we try to pack it into places like the land category with Odawara and Boseju when we can. We want removal that absolutely decimates opponents. I run this in every red-green deck as it can take out a variety of permanents. And then you also want to mix them into your creature type where possible to have a higher dino count, such as Tranquil Philbrack and Thrashing Brontodon, getting rid of various things. But as far as like cheap removal to just get the opponent's must-kill creatures out of the way, I like Suspend, Tail Swipe, and Savage Stomp. I do not like cards like Rapid, Hybridization, Pongify in my creature decks because I don't like giving my opponent something they could block with. I would rather bounce or phase out their creature uh, than actually give them, like, blow up their thing and give them a 3 3 with a deck with a card like Beast Within, uh, as I do intend to attack them to death. It's kind of my kind of my jam uh the sweepers the cresting monster source emerge sweeps all non-dinos raise the palisade can name dino and sweep all non-dinos and a vandal blast which some might ca not count as a sweeper i do there's usually enough artifacts that feels like you blew up a huge amount of the board right then and there uh and untaps untappers are a minor part of this deck but if you untap owen you can move counters multiple times in a turn so we include the minamo school at the water's edge and the legolas is quick reflexes for that i like dinosaur decks i like commander decks i like showing them to people i don't always get to play them let me know if you enjoyed this deck tech leave me a suggestion down below if you would have uh both suggestions for the video or other cards that you put in your dino deck honestly i'm partial to the comments about what i put in my dino deck uh there are a lot of deck tech videos out there a lot of them do the same thing this one didn't exactly break the mold i'm doing it really for me i just want to put these into the world for somebody to check out if that's what they want to do and remember before commenting about the price tag just you can just cut these you can change the lands add more basics like this deck has nine basics you can run 15 basics take out the most expensive cards and add basics easy don't know don't know why it's such a big deal to talk about the price of commander decks but it is magic the gathering thank you for watching this video as always i'll see you in the next one you're cool